This is a review of solving compound inequalities because we learned this in Algebra 1, and this is geometry. We're at 5.4c. We have seven previous videos for Chapter 5 that are linked in the geometry playlist. So, I hope you remember, to solve an inequality, we use the properties of inequality and inverse operations to undo the operations in the inequality one at a time. So here's all the properties. We've got the addition property of inequality. It says we're going to have a equal 2, b equal 3, and c equal 1. So if a is less than b, then a plus c is less than b plus c. So 2 is less than 3, so 2 plus 1 is less than 3 plus 1. And the subtraction property of inequality, we're going to have a is 2, b is 3, and c as 1. So if a is less than b, then a minus c is less than b minus c. So if 2 is less than 3, so 2 minus 1 is less than 3 minus 1. We have a couple of them for the multiplication property of inequality. And if you notice, the signs are going to switch when we get to this one. If a is less than b and c is greater than 0, then a times c is less than b times c. A is going to be 2, B is going to be 3, and C is going to be 1, so it's greater than 0. So 2 is less than 3, and 1 is greater than 0, then 2 times 1 is less than 3 times 1. Now, our signs are going to switch. This one became a less than, and this one became a greater than. See that? If A is less than B, and C is less than 0, so in this case, it's going to be a negative 1, okay? Then AC is greater than BC. So 2 is less than 3, and negative 1 is less than 0. Then 2 times negative 1, that's a negative 2, is greater than 3 times negative 1, that's a negative 3. And yes, negative 2 is closer to 0, so it's bigger. So it is greater. And the division property of inequality also has signs reversing. See, it's going greater than here and less than here, less than here and greater than here. So. We're going to have a is 2, b is 3, and c is 1 for this one. If a is less than b and c is greater than 0, then a divided by c is less than b divided by c. So if 2 is less than 3 and 1 is greater than 0, then 2 divided by 1 is less than 3 divided by 1. Yeah, 2 is less than 3. For this one, now the signs are reversed. It says if a is less than b and c is less than 0, so this time it's going to be a negative 1, then a divided by c is greater than b divided by c. So 2 is less than 3 and negative 1 is less than 0. Well, then 2 divided by negative 1, that's a negative 2, is greater than a negative 3. And the transitive property of inequality, we have if a is less than b and b is less than c, then a is less than c. So now a is 2, b is 3, and c is 4. 2 is less than 3, and 3 is less than 4, then 2 is less than 4. Here's the comparison property of inequality. If a plus b equals c, so 2 plus 1 equals 3, and b is greater than 0, yeah, b was a 1, 1 is greater than 0, then a is less than c, then 2 is less than 3, see? Compound inequality is formed when two simple inequalities are combined into one statement with the word and or or. And to solve a compound inequality, we solve each simple inequality and find the intersection or union of the solutions. The graph of a compound inequality may represent a line, ray, two rays, or a segment. Now, if you're very confused so far, we're beyond chap chapters 4 and 9 and Algebra 1. We're in geometry now. If you don't remember this or if you've never learned it, you need to go to the link and watch chapters 4 and 9 in Algebra 1, okay? You'll thank yourself. So here's an example. We're going to solve the compound inequality. 20 minus 3a is greater than 5 and less than or equal to 11. So remember, when we have two inequality signs, we start reading in the middle, okay? So what geometric figure does this graph represent? So first, let's solve this and then figure out what graph it represents when we graph it. So we rewrite the compound inequality into, as two simple inequalities. So we have 5 is less than 20 minus 3a, and 20 minus 3a is less than or equal to 11. We start by subtracting 20 from both sides of the inequality sign. 
we get negative 15 is less than negative 3a. And on this one, when we subtract 20 from both sides, this is eliminated and we get negative 3a is less than or equal to negative 9. Now we divide both sides by this coefficient negative 3. We do it over here too. So that's going to give us a positive 5 and this is going to give us an a and look the inequality signs flipped. Over here we're going to get a positive a and the inequality sign flipped and we have a positive 3. So we divided both sides by that negative 3 and reversed the sign because of the negative. Whenever we're doing dividing a negative with the inequalities, we flip the sign. Now we can combine the two solutions into one statement. A is greater than or equal to 3 and less than 5. So remember the black filled in dot means it's included and the open one means it doesn't include it. So if it's greater than or equal to 3, it could be 3, so we have the filled in dot. And it's less than 5, so it doesn't include 5, so we have the open dot. This graph represents a segment. Okay? Watch Algebra 1, Chapters 4 and 9 if you don't remember this, because as we move forward, you're going to get more confused, and you'll only be helping yourself, okay? We're going to learn how to write an indirect proof in 5.5a. And I hope you remember this from Algebra 1, and I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Bye.